Hello and welcome to Down to Earth, a podcast created by the environmental charity Hubbub. This season is all about fashion, because would you believe it, the fashion industry produces 10% of all carbon emissions and clothing production has roughly doubled since 2000. Alongside that, one garbage truck full of clothes is being burned or dumped in landfill every second. So we want to discover why we're buying so much and how our wardrobes impact the world around us. I'm Sarah Dival and I've been working in the environmental space for seven years, but I've always been a big shopper. I love fashion and I love new clothes, and however much I learn about what the fashion industry is up to, I still find fast fashion a hard habit to break, and I find it really difficult to know how to dress sustainably. I know I'm not alone in that feeling, so I want to bring you with me as we meet the designers, experts and change makers who unpick why our wardrobes aren't working for us and for the planet. This week, we're talking to Aniela, founder of the fashion project Community Couture, which stretches the limits of how we should think about fashion and what we wear. Community Couture invites people to become part of the design process, Hundreds of people help in either designing or making garments that are then rented to people all around the country. It's an experiment in sharing and in using fashion as a method of storytelling. In this episode, we talk about how being involved in the creation of your clothes might make you think differently about them and what sharing might look like in the future. I hope you enjoy it. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm really excited to have that chat with you, Sarah. In general, it's not our first conversation uh, about Community Couture because we actually met through Community Couture. And to give you a bit more introduction, Community Couture is this project um, that is expanding and expanding. And it's about making uh, textiles and clothes that are made and designed collectively to be shared. So we are based on rental model. Uh, and we make as few things as possible with as many people as possible. So they are community-made textiles that usually happen or are made uh, in response to a question or a topic or a theme uh, and are a way for people to come together and connect and kind of share their opinions co- and which then become contributions, kind of make something in response to what they to like illustrate what they are thinking. And then that kind of accumulates into this illustrative textile that then becomes a garment um, that other can share and enjoy and, you know, wear other people's thoughts and think, hmm, who am I in a context of all those stories that I'm wearing? And what made you start Community Couture in the first place? What did you think was missing or what was the kind of hole that you were trying to fill by making that first garment? During the pandemic, I felt quite disconnected from people and I didn't feel like, um, and I think many of us did um, kind of struggle with the fact that we were closed by ourselves and uh, or isolating or stuck with one or two people. And I was just thinking, how can I create something that will bring people together, even though, and my friends together, but also the wider kind of, you know, wider, wider community that, that kind of this project then created together um and i and i i so, so so i was thinking how to bring people together through products and how how to create something that will be able to do that um so i um opened that call on uh, social media because initially that started on instagram and i asked people in my proximity how does the world feel or look to them right now Because I don't know if you remember, there was a moment during the pandemic when everyone was just sharing, oh, I feel sad, I feel happy, I feel lonely, I feel I miss things. And I thought, well, these are such strong things, such strong feelings. And stories on social media have tendency to be underappreciated and disappear. And they are designed to do that. You know, we've got 24 hour kind of cycle. But those things are too important and too valuable to disappear like that. And they actually can help us connect. Uh, and there is a need for that connection. So I thought, well, how could I do that through fashion? How could I do that through textiles? You know, knowing that textiles you historically or in many different contexts can be, um, you know, can be, can be used to connect and have this st- storytelling dimension. So I did that call and I received 37 different contributions. Um, 
in response to that question, and I and I kind of brought them together to, in into that fabric, thinking, well, we can't be physically together, but I can kind of capture it, uh, capture those stories and capture people's thoughts and those emotions in one thing and that way we can be together that can, that way we can connect we can even though physically separated we can be metaphorically together connected with those emotions on that piece of textiles and fabric um so i did it and it received really beautiful response from everyone who participated in and beyond because um people basically felt super appreciated because when you use craft and you kind of make someone's story into a physical object or into an illustration, they, it, it comes with time and it comes with effort and it comes with care. People kind of start reflecting upon their own, you know, value that is always there, but we just don't get a chance to think that our, our, you know, experiences are important. That makes perfect sense. And I actually wondered if you could try and, describe what the jacket looks like for people at home because I've seen it before and tried it on so I've got a picture in my mind of what it looks like um, but I think it would be helpful if we could paint the image for everyone listening. Sure so the jacket is very colorful it's um, unisex uh, size so it's quite boxy and uh, large but it kind of is designed in a way that lots of different people of different sizes and shapes look good in it and, and I say it it's a, I've got a proof of concepts here because we've got lots of people that rented it and they all felt uh, good in it and they took some awesome pictures that you can see on Community Culture Instagram. So it's not only my opinion that they that, that, that it works for lots of different people. There is a proof. Uh, it is very colorful. Uh, not to say that it's very happy. However, that's like how it seems. There is a lot of joy in coming together and I think that's reflected in that jacket. But... The point wasn't to make something that is happy. The point was to make something that brings attention to those stories and color can do that super well. And if you make something that's colorful, people will respond to it. And there is that the jacket became, because of those colors, basically a conversation starter. So when someone rents it and put, put, puts it on and start, you know, waits in a bath stop, uh, they have, and this is, I'm now sharing um, something that people who rented it to me told me rep repeatedly, like repeatedly, that when they wear it, people stop them on the street and ask, what is this? How did, like, what happened? How are you, like, what is going on? Like, this is so in interesting. This is like, is it, what kind of craft is it? What those things mean? Because you can see that it's unique. It, it gets an attention and it becomes a conversation and it becomes, um, you know, it creates an opportunity for the wearer to talk about community, talk about uh, what it means to come together, or really just talk about whatever they want, because I don't polish those conversations, you know. If, 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 if wearing that jacket will create the opportunity to, for someone to just meet someone else and have a conversation about, I don't know, dogs or coffee, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> and it sounds like you're thinking about fashion not just in terms of what you're wearing and how people look at you, but it's like a you're going a step beyond. You're thinking about how can we use craft and design to bring people together, to make more connections, to teach people about sharing. It's probably worth saying that so this jacket and I assume the other pieces when they're ready can be rented through Lone Hood. So not only are they co-designed, but also anyone in the country can rent that jacket and take it somewhere new for a week and then pass it on to someone else. Have you had any stories from people who have, you know, never tried renting before or have experienced kind of sharing in a different way since being involved in community culture? Yeah, so it's really interesting because of, because of the storytelling dimension of it, people come with lots of very interesting reflections. There was this one lady that I I will always remember her comment just because it gave me shivers and she said she said well I always wear beige or black and as I mentioned before Jackie is quite colorful and I always wear she said I always wear beige or, or black or colors that make me invisible because I feel very uncomfortable bringing the attention to myself but with this jacket, I feel completely comfortable wearing it, even though it's very colorful because I don't bring attention to myself. I bring attention to people around me. So that was fascinating. It was absolutely fascinating because in fashion, you know, there is this tendency to use fashion 
um, as something to bring attention to ourselves, you know? And there is nothing exactly wrong in that, but it's just not the only function that it could have. Like, we use fashion to, you know, look beautiful, be attractive, get people, you know, attracted to us and, and, and you know, feel sexy and all those things. And that is a, a beautiful power of fashion and we can feel, you know, um, empowered stronger by using it that way. But there is, she kind of made me almost aware of the fact that there is this other dimension of fashion, which is it can bring attention to whatever you want it to. Like, it's just a tool to bring in attention to lots of different things and community and togetherness can be one of them. Uh, and I just loved it. It feels like you're rubbing very directly against the model of fashion that we have at the moment in that it's like everything's very cheap it's produced very quickly we want to buy something new because we need to make ourselves feel better so there's a pressure to keep buying more and to keep buying new whereas the community couture project is deliberately designing things that take a lot of time to make and take a lot of people to make them having small amounts of items that travel around to lots of people as much as product is very important, we are not necessarily product focused or the value isn't in making lots of stuff. So that's the, um, that's the main difference in comparison to like a commercial, typical, uh, you know, your, your regular fashion industry where um, you've got prof profit of value is based on, you know, number of sales. Um, and that's, that is... That's definitely something that we don't do and we kind of can't do because of how long it takes to make one thing. Another thing that is different is that it's um, based on the experience rather than on the product again. So it's based on we bringing people around to be part of that experience and to kind of look into what fashion could be and engage in making and be part of the process and kind of bringing them into that um, fashion space as you know designers and because they because everyone who, who comes and participates in those workshops they don't need to call themselves designers but ultimately they design something that becomes a part of that piece so it's giving lots of different people with lots of different skills um, a way to engage with fashion and with making and with culture and with you know the notion of what luxury is or could be and what is it that you think that luxury could be? So um, there are a few layers into that because because community culture is really rethinking what luxury is. So when you look at luxury products, when you look at big brands that sell things for a lot of money, luxury and the value is drawn from a bit of craft, but also from the logo, from the branding, from the history of that brand. Um, and from the status that it gives you, right? Because it's like, it's a, it's, there are a lot of it is in status. And I often ask myself, you know, what is this, is this how luxury will look in 50 years or in 100 years? What is actually luxury in times that we're living now? Like, because for some people, realistically now with climate change, luxury is having clean water and, you know, being able to sustain themselves or be, there are lots of, things that are luxury that we from a quite privileged London perspective don't really see as luxury and I but during the pandemic I started reflecting on luxury in my own context and I was like well luxury is meeting people luxury is connecting luxury is coming together luxury is hanging out that's a luxury for me now and then I actually thought well it's not only during the pandemic because London is such an isolating city. And also we do live in those ways that are so disconnected. We create those bubbles where we kind of, you know, always hang out with the same people. We don't really expose ourselves much to other perspectives and other ways of being. And it's really difficult, even if we want to, to break beyond that because you know internet and, and social media work in a very similar manner. It's all within the bubble. So for me, luxury starts being about breaking out of that bubble and thinking, how can I create environments and how can I create fashion luxury, which kind of pushes beyond that and opens up and goes into, well, luxury is about connecting and it's about sitting around that table for like 
from five minutes to how long you want and you know looking at me and look and i will be able to look at you and unlike in london underground we'll be able to you know without feeling awkward say something to each other because that's what this place facilitates <laughs> and digging more into the the fashion side of it i'm interested in how as a creator as a designer what do you think needs to change in the fashion industry to make it more sustainable for the planet the people working in it the people who are buying it i think that's what fashion really needs to do it needs to think beyond the product you know think beyond the product again what is fashion for because in many ways fashion is very tribal it's it's a it is about connecting and bringing people together it is it's always been about it it was it was connected to class it was connected to you know where do you belong in a society but we can use its power to connect to break through those old paradigms and use it to connect in different ways and with different people and 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 kind of just direct the connection towards things that we believe are again valuable i'm interested in what you said about tribalism and whether you think that's one of the reasons why in places like the uk that consumption is so high because there's a pressure to be seem to be in with a certain group you want your peers to view you a certain way and I wonder whether that leads to a hike in consumption because we all want to fit in with each other it's a tricky thing because you can I don't think we can tell people not to, like to just not want to belong right that's like so it's so natural and I I understand why people sh shop the way they do um considering what is happening in the marketing space and how fashion is projected and how it's advertised like I don't think consumers are the ones to blame per se because there is a big machine behind this that is telling us that is, you know, that we are not good enough and we need to do something about it. And it's really difficult to, it's very difficult to resist that. And I also speak, speak from personal perspective. I, you know, I love fashion. That's why I got into it. Like I love looking great and I love feeling attractive and relevant like there is I, I love it it's great um but if you're not reflective about it there is a price to pay and that price is your mental health and it's uh, also financial cost because it's not cheap to chase those trends and it's just not fulfilling it's you're never going to feel fulfilled so i think what needs to happen is uh an education so people need to understand that this 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 system is designed in a way that is kind of luring them into thinking that they that buying will make them happy but it won't ever do that so and i don't think lots of people are aware of that i don't think we have t tools to understand it and i also don't think we have tools to resist it and i think when i when i work with community culture it's quite interesting to see how people stand there standing fashion in a different way because they connect with it through this and through this like lens of making and doing things with their own hands and even if something that they've made isn't you know on the they don't perceive it as beautiful often people feel accomplished anyway or they receive help from others to make it more beautiful and i think that contributes to people's well-being and they start realizing that oh actually making it's it, it can be very frustrating but also if i get enough help it can be extremely rewarding and there are layers to that and they, they start seeing fashion and making and clothes through a slightly different lens and similar with laundhood i think and, and rental in general you, people start realizing that what what makes them happy or fulfilled is not necessarily buying it's the ex experiencing and it's you know having that outfit on that even and being complimented and beyond that they don't really need that thing they don't really need that dress to be in their wardrobe they can give it back we don't have to own it in order to get the benefits from wearing it and being seen in it and enjoying it exactly so it's just about making those experiences more accessible because rental it's still in my personal opinion, fairly expensive, or maybe the value isn't um, shown in the way that it um, is 
convincing for lots of people. And I think that's the biggest barrier because as long as you have very cheap dress for five pounds, it's difficult to convince someone that they should rent something or it's a good idea to rent something for 20 if they're not going to own it. So I think there is work to be done in terms of showing that value, justifying that value, educating people and ourselves uh, on what that value actually is. But uh, having those conversations about the fact that fashion industry as is doesn't make us happy. And we are being fooled into this idea that it is, and you know, those wonderful wait, those wonderful words await for us with this new T-shirt. That <laughs> I, I think that's the trickiest bit. That's the trickiest bit because I, you know, I love fashion communication. It's beautiful, but it just doesn't do the job. It doesn't do what it promises. And actually, I think that brings us nicely to the last question that I want to ask you, which is, if there's one thing that people listening could do at home to redress their relationship with fashion if they are buying a lot? Um, what do you think that they can do to build a more sustainable, healthier relationship with their own wardrobe and what they're buying? Well, I think I'm I'm a bit like a broken record, but I think maybe, again, sharing, and, and that doesn't necessarily mean rental, maybe just sharing things with your friends or with your flatmates, kind of opening your wardrobe out and thinking about... You, you know this idea of ownership and why do we feel so precious about it and which things are the ones that I actually do want to have and they are so meaningful to me personally that I want to treasure them and they are they are mine and you know I go golem at them and it's fine and which are the things that I actually don't care so much about and uh, I can share and I can you know give to others to enjoy whenever they want because it's it's easy and it's happening already like i i share things with my sisters and i think lots of people do that without even calling it rental or sharing it's just kind of a natural thing to do and and kind of building on that and starting doing that with your friends or friends of friends it could be interesting and it could be it doesn't need to be facilitated by apps even though I really like Lone Hood, it could happen on WhatsApp, you know? You could have a WhatsApp group with your mates and lots of people, I think, doing that already again. So building on that, carrying on doing that, and if you've never done it, trying it out, I think that's a pretty good idea. I think it's got more normal, at least in my group of friends, if everyone started to move closer and closer together, but to be like, oh no, I have a wedding tomorrow or I have a party tomorrow or I've ruined this shirt. Can somebody help me out? I need another one. That it's we've got to a point where most of us know what each other has in our wardrobes and it's easy enough to say can I borrow that for a day because I need it for xyz um and it saves everybody money it saves everybody time you sometimes I see my friends put my stuff on and I'm like oh my god that dress is amazing why do we never wear that I had that happening to me my friend gave me this jacket and she was like oh I don't wear it I don't like it I look silly in it and then I started wearing it and she was like hmm, did I give it to you or did you borrow it? <laughs> it gives you a different perspective and I think that's fun completely. It, it doesn't solve all the fashion problems and it won't address every need, you know, like pe people are so different and I think sometimes we do have to shop, like that's the reality of it, but it can reduce the numbers of stuff that we buy and I think that's already quite good, you know. Um, and I think just, well, just to add to it, uh, another thing that, I want to touch upon in terms of community culture, but not only, well, rental in general, is this um, culture of trust that I think is making it very difficult for, for us to share stuff. And the fact that we, we just kind of afraid that things will be destroyed or broken or not appreciated. And even though we might not appreciate them, we kind of worry that other people won't appreciate them even more. And that, that makes it, that makes it very difficult for people to open up and, and share things. But, you know, we've done that with our houses and that's, that, that's Airbnb and we've done that with cars and that's Uber. So is there a way for us to build that culture of trust in fashion and, you know, make, have garments that are very precious that we share and we are not afraid of them being destroyed because, because we believe that other people can take care of them as well as we do, or we, we learn how to take care of other people's stuff. I think that's, that, that, that's, that's quite an exciting thing 
for me to imagine. And I'm that is the thing that makes community culture possible in general because uh, basically we are renting a garment that took, as I said, 600 hours to make and it has 37 different quite emotional and precious stories on it. And I can't even sell it because I technically don't own it because it's collectively made. Um, it contains lots of different stories, so I can't sell all the people's contributions because that feels wrong. So we could split the income, but that's, I don't think, that that is a bit, that doesn't feel right either, because how do you do that? So every person that rents it takes care of those stories and of the piece itself, that if you wanted to, you know, in a kind of capitalist, money-driven way, sell it, would be good couple if not more thousand of pounds in labor because my rate per hour is you know fair <laughs> so giving that away to someone and say well here is here is two weeks um there is the you know i'm giving you that jacket do whatever you want with it take it wherever you want i know it's going to come back in a good shape and if it doesn't uh we will figure something out and most of it probably will be reparable i, I just need to make sure that you know you will take care of it. It takes, you know, it takes courage to do that. And I think after 20 odd, well, almost 30 rentals now, I can convincingly say that nothing, it never came back to me damaged. So it's, it's yeah, it's just, it's just a different mindset. And, and I think we can adopt that. Other industries did adopt it. So I think fashion can do that as well. Thank you so much for listening with my chat with Aniela. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or if you have any sharing stories of your own, you can send me an email. My email, as always, is hello at hubbub.org.uk. And if you're interested in renting the jacket Aniela was talking about, you can do so through Loanhood. We're actually going to be speaking to them next week, so make sure that you tune in for that. This podcast was presented by me, Sarah Dival created by Hubbub and produced by Ellie J.